I'm Heidi Hesrick, Biomedical Lab Science Teacher, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Forensic Toxicology Kit from Word Science. This is the kit that we're using for today's lab. So first you want to lay out two well plates as shown, and you want to label uh, the top of the well plates with the four different known substances, ecstasy, oxycodone, aspirin, acetaminophen, and unknown and then you'll have one column that has nothing in it. And the rows, you'll want to label H2O for the distilled water, pH, HCl for hydrochloric acid, and Fn for ferric nitrate. Now make sure that each of your scoops goes with just one of your bottles of chemicals so that you don't cross-contaminate your chemicals. And now I'm going to put on my PPE because even though I'm working at my sun porch and not in my typical lab, um, it's still important to wear the proper PPE. For the next step, make sure you're working with the right chemical. So this one says ecstasy, and ecstasy is going to be my first column. And then you want to get a little scoop of it for each of those four wells in that column. And this has gotten clumpy, so I need to break it up first. And one thing that you want to try to keep constant is about how much you're putting into each well. So as best you can, try to have a consistent amount of grains of the chemical in each well. And I've shown you how to do ecstasy, but now I'm going to go ahead and load uh, all of the rest of the wells. Okay, you can see that I've now loaded each of the wells and a couple of sources of error potentially. You might notice there are some grains of some of the substances on the edges. I think a tiny bit of ecstasy might have gone into one of my oxycodone wells. Um, but also it was difficult to get exactly the same amount into each well. But now you want to just look closely at the texture of each of the substances in case that might be important to determining the identity of the unknown. Now, if you're going to be doing this lab on your own, you want to stop here so that you don't see the results. You will simply add one to two drops of each of your liquids to the correct row and look for signs of a chemical change. So we're looking for bubbling or color change generally as signs of a chemical change. For the second row, you're going to need to compare it to a pH chart to determine the pH. If you're not able to run this lab in person, however, uh, you can watch and then just interpret the results. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add some distilled water to the first row and see how we have some bubbling with the ecstasy. So that means we do have a chemical reaction between water and ecstasy. However, it looks like oxycodone and aspirin are not experiencing a chemical reaction, nor is the acetaminophen. And the unknown also does not appear to be bubbling. So at that point, think about what we can rule out in terms of what the unknown is. In this next step, we are looking to see what the pH is. So are these substances acidic, basic, or neutral? And we're going to add this chemical called Universal Indicator, which is awesome for helping us to determine pH. And then if we're having trouble seeing reactions, uh, we can use toothpicks to mix up the substances just to make sure they fully come in contact with one another. I don't really think that's necessary in this step particularly because we saw color changes immediately. But just to make sure we're getting a full reaction, I'll go ahead and stir each one. And notice that I'm doing it with a different toothpick each time so we don't have cross-contamination. And again, we're looking to see what the unknown matches because if it's the same substance, it's going to have the same reaction. And it looks like there's something that, a couple of things we can rule out um, based on the pH results. Remember that you also want to look at this pH card to determine the actual pH 
of each of the substances for your data table. So match it as best you can to the corresponding color. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the hydrochloric acid test. And just like with the last one, we just wanna add a couple of drops. Look for signs of a reaction. Bubbling is always a chemical reaction. Uh, unless it's caused by heating and it's really just boiling. This one at first I thought was bubbling, but it looks like the crystals are just floating. Same with acetaminophen. And with the unknown, again, no bubbling. So in those first two wells with ecstasy and oxycodone, we definitely had bubbling. They're continuing to bubble. And as I stir it, I see more bubbling. So a gas is being created. But with aspirin, no gas was generated. The crystals just floated. Same with acetaminophen, and same with the unknown. Hey, at this point, if you've been paying attention, you should know what the unknown substance is because you should have been able to rule out all but one thing. But this final test uh, is going to confirm whether or not you're right or help you out if you're still not sure. So now we're adding iron nitrate. Ooh, we're getting bubbling and color change. That's exciting. Again, it can be challenging in some of these wells to tell whether we're having a reaction. Certainly in well one, lots of bubbling. Well two, bubbling. Well three, it looks like it changed colors, but there's no bubbling. The crystals are just sort of floating. Same with well four. And then in well five, again, we had a really nice, beautiful color change, but the crystals are just floating on the surface. So looking at this data, Ask yourself which of the four unknown substances best matches the chemical and physical properties of the unknown. So for the physical properties, you're looking at what it looked like in terms of the crystals. And for the chemical properties, how did it react with water? Uh, what was its pH? How did it react or not react with hydrochloric acid? And how did it react or not react with ferric nitrate? Clean up your station. To do that, wipe out all of the wells with a paper towel, making sure the chemicals go in the trash can as best you can. Uh, it's better to have them go into a landfill than into the water system. And then thoroughly wash your plates, rinse them really well, and allow them to dry. The toothpicks will need to be thrown in the trash, and the little scoops will need to be washed and reused. Now you've had the chance to play the role of a forensic toxicologist, forensic chemist, and I hope you were successful in figuring out the identity of the unknown substance.